You are listening to the Midnight Movie Snack Podcast with Chris and Garrett. Hello, and welcome to the Midnight Movie Snack Podcast. I'm Chris. Tonight, Garrett and I have our snacks in hand, and we're ready to watch a comedy classic from 1986, another film in our movie commentary series celebrating its 35th anniversary this month. It's Rodney Dangerfield's Back to School. After a career of stand-up and guest appearances on The Tonight Show, Rodney Dangerfield struck comedy gold with movies such as Caddyshack and Easy Money. Back to School is considered one of his best, and for good reason. Dangerfield is firing on all cylinders in this movie, and he's backed by a stellar cast, including Burt Young, Sally Kellerman, the late great Ned Beatty, and a young Robert Downey Jr. Plus, the movie features one of my favorite bands from the 1980s, Oingo Boingo, led by frontman and now movie music composer Danny Elfman, who also did the music for this movie. So, grab your copy of Back to School and join Garrett and me for our movie commentary in celebration of the 35th anniversary of Rodney Dangerfield's Back to School. So, uh, <laughs> so we started recording, but we've been talking for like the last half hour about all kinds of stuff. Um, so tonight we are, you know, I, I've said this about some episodes and it's certainly true about this one. And, and I'm not just saying it just to say it, but I am really looking forward to watching this movie because it's not that I haven't seen it in a long time. I, it seems like I catch it on TV here and there. Uh, what's funny about this, though, is, and I'm sure you've had this phenomena happen with you as well. You will catch a movie on TV. You never catch it at the beginning. You always catch it at the same part. Like, no matter, I mean, you don't even know that it's on. You're just flipping through and you just hit it and it's at the same kind of area. This movie is an example of that for me. Every time I catch it on TV, and this has been for years, I either catch it at the scene where Sam Kennison the, is like screaming at Rodney. Ah! Yeah. Or it's the scene where Kurt Vonnegut shows up because, you know, D- Dangerfield writes a paper about Vonnegut and gets like a failing grade on it, but it actually like Vonnegut wrote it. Yeah. Those are the two scenes. I never catch it before that. I've never caught it like, oh, it's just starting. Great. Or, oh, here's the end. It's those two scenes. It's the funny. Every time I see it, I laugh because I'm like, here we go again. It's like, I always catch it at those points. Uh, But I love this movie and I love it because Rodney Dangerfield, you know, as a kid in the eighties, you know, he had been around for a while with his standup, but I just thought he was the funniest comedian and, and he just, his, his humor, like, of course with Caddyshack and then easy money and then this, uh, back to school, I just thought he was hilarious. He was the master of one-liners and and just always had had a comeback. He's and um, this movie, and it's also what's special about this movie is that not only did I enjoy it, like the critics actually gave it really high marks. I mean, everybody really seemed to like, you know, he had struck gold with this one. And and, it, and I think in the times I've seen this movie quite a number of times in, in broken pieces and, and in total, but. Um, yeah, it has a 86% on Rotten yeah. Tomatoes. It's good. Fresh. It, it's good. And that is one of, and I looked at like Robert Downey Jr.'s cause he's in this movie. Yeah. Uh, he's, this is like outside of Marvel being like yeah. Captain America and some, some civil war and stuff like he, Avengers and some stuff like that. He did. This is probably like his, maybe his fourth highest rotten tomato score. I mean, he, he's, mm-hmm. he's got some that are pretty good. Don't get me wrong. I'm not saying yeah. this is like, I think this is equal to like kiss, kiss, bang, bang. Mm-hmm. And this is like, I think it has 86 as well, but he's got a couple that are a little bit higher, but most of those are in the Avenger marvel universe yeah. that they're fresh so i mean this is i mean this is uh yeah and this is never for, this is never four of 1996 it was a huge hit 
Huge it beat out office. Alien. It beat yep. out Star Trek Four. It yep. beat out Ferris Bueller's Day Off. Well, let me just say, <clears throat> well, actually, no, Star Trek Four was good. I was thinking it was the one after that, the one that was really bad. But and no, yeah, you're right. Painted. It did. It beat out a lot of movies, and and I think because, you know, it all beat of out those. Gunko. <laughs> it beat kidding. out what? Gunko. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Sorry, Michael Keaton. Uh, That's another one to add to the list. I saw that in the it movie. Beat up more, it beat up Friday the 13th, part six. Jason lives. I mean, my goodness. I mean, yeah. Man, you're, you're naming these movies. I'm like, yeah, 1986 was an amazing year for movies. That's a whole other episode right there, just talking about 1986. Um, but yeah, I think this movie, it just, it, it was universal enough. Like all of those other movies were great. But they're all a lot of them were genre sci-fi, teen comedy. Um, this one I felt was just very universal. Like I, I remember, I actually remember when I saw it in the theaters, thinking that it was a really diverse group. Because so, you know, some movies growing up you go to, it's like mostly teenagers, mostly young adults. I remember going to see Back to School, that it was like there were parent, there were older folks like like older older folks like people i guess who were fans of rodney's from when he was you know started out in the whenever it was the 60s and 70s um kids our age at the time um so it was a broad broad audience and i think that's part of the reason why it was so huge is because it had mass appeal um you know rodney had a lot of fans and especially after caddyshack and easy money uh right. you know and it's honestly, it's like I was looking at the description for the movie uh, earlier today when I was when I was downloading the movie. Um, and I'm like, it's such a great idea. Like the, this, the whole story idea is like, you know, there's a wealthy dad who's worried about his son. You know, his son doesn't want to stay in college. And so he decides to motivate him by enrolling in college, you know, with him. And it's just it uh, it's a great comedic idea and and if you look at the credits it's not a surprise because the guys who were involved the folks that were involved in writing this movie i mean it is it was a, a who's who of, of comedy um greats and maybe not well-known comedy greats but harold ramus was one he's probably the best known aside from rodney uh who worked on the the screenplay for this movie uh, but two of the other folks on the movie, um, let me get their names because I just read about them. Um, uh, Peter Torov, his last name is Russian. I'm not going to pronounce it right. Torokev or yeah. Yeah, Torokev yeah. Uh, and Will Porter. Um, and St excuse me, uh, Peter and Stephen worked on WKRP in Cincinnati. In you fact, Peter was the head writer. Okay. Uh, so basically, you know, Rodney Dangerfield surrounded himself with some really talented comic writers. And those guys, I think, really created something that was not, I don't think, I don't think Rodney ever had it again. And he did several movies after this one. But it's like these guys were so good with comedy and just the comic timing. And they knew that they really wrote to Rodney's strengths. And so um, that's what I, I remember about this movie is that I just felt like it was a really strong, because even back in, in the eighties, you know, as a, as a teenager, um, I was noticing the writing in movies, you know, I was always fascinated with it. And I always just felt like this is so well put together in terms of just the, the script. And so um, I think it's part of the reason why it's, it's still one of my favorites. Oh, I mean, this is, I think, I don't remember if I saw this in the theater or not, may have not saying I didn't, or I don't know if I did, if I did or didn't, but this is definitely one of those that was on and, you know, HBO. Oh yeah. And I mean, I think this is the time frame. I mean, obviously it did really well at the box office. So it's not like this needed HBO to make it, what it what even though it did really well i think in the vcr in the rental department but yeah i think this is one of those, this is these are definitely the this is the decade that really began the whole you know that the that a movie had a second life even mm -hmm. after it was at the theater and i and i and you're right this movie i think speaks to 
you know, it's got people like, you know, it's got Ned Beatty or is that Ned, Ned, Beatty. Name? Ned Beatty. Ned Beatty. He just yep. recently passed away. So um, this is a little tribute to him. But I mean, you got yeah. Burt Young in it. I mean, you got some older people in this movie. And you got some people like Robert Downey Jr., William Zabka. You got you know, mm-hmm. and then the guy who was uh, Rodney's son. What's his name? He was from, Keith he was Gordon. Chris, huh? Keith Gordon. Keith Gordon. You know, I mean, was it, was it, was it Christine? Yeah, he was in Christine. Right. Yeah. I mean, so, you know, so. so, so, so he's so also in Jaws 2. Huh? He was also in Jaws 2. Right. So those are things that people knew him from and whatever. Mm-hmm. So, they, you know, so, so it had a good cast and, of young uh, and old at the time. His, his love interest in the movie um, Valerie is played by Terry Farrell. Terry, uh, her, I think her big claim to fame came in the nineties. She was on one of the Star Trek shows, uh, Star Trek Deep Space Nine. And then she also, from there she went, uh, she was on um, Ted Danson's sitcom uh, Becker for a couple of years. Oh yeah. So this was like, I think this might've been her first movie role. She also shot a movie in North Carolina uh, back in the 90s. She shot, I think it was Hellraiser 3. (laughs) Yeah, so she she was the female lead in that movie. But um, she's a great actress. I I don't know if she's still in it. It's got Edie McClurg in it. Yeah, Edie McClurg's in it. Yeah. She's she's popping back up again. Yeah. Adrian Barbeau. Oh, um, yeah. You know, from, and we'll be watching a movie with her not too long from now, Escape from New York. Yep. And um, uh, talking about Terry Farrell and her connection with Star Trek, there's another Star Trek actor in this movie, uh, Robert Picardo. Uh, He played um, the doctor in Star Trek Voyager. He was the holographic doctor. Um, He plays Giorgio in this. It's a smaller role. But um, yeah, this had a great cast. Had a great cast. Yeah, this is a really good cast. Very well-rounded for sure. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, there's just so much about this movie that, just works it's got a good cast got good writing you got marty mcfly's uncle in this movie as well so <laughs> that's right that's, that's right that's pretty cool i mean anytime, i mean anytime you get marty mcfly's uncle it's you know yeah you can't you can't beat that <laughs> you got two tvs what <laughs> house a rerun what's a rerun <laughs> that's right that's right you had uh jason uh jason hervey he played yep. the Rodney as a young man. Yeah, that's right. I forgot he was in this. Yeah. Um, well, I think we should just, no time like the present. Let's go ahead and get yes. this started. Um, okay. So as I always say with every episode, for those of you listening to this episode and are wanting to watch Back to School with us, make sure you have your legally acquired copy. And uh, I'm going to get us set up here. Um, I have this queued up. I'm at zero. I've got a black screen, but it's zero, zero. So what I'm going to do is I'll count us down from three and then hit play. And as I say, play, hit play on your device. So back to school in three, two, one, play. Got the line. You have the line. Yep. Oh, Ryan Pictures. Now I got it. Okay, now mine says a Ryan Pictures release. What's yours? Yep. Okay, I'm just trying to make sure. We're, we're close, I think. By the way, my snack for tonight is a uh, power bar. It is a chocolate peanut butter power bar. So, cheers. That I got Junior Mints. I can always count on you for Junior Mints. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Oh, there's, there's Jason. There's little Marty McFly's uncle. And from the Wonder Years. No, it's just Marty McFly's uncle. I don't even... Yeah, that's good. Oh, no, that's... He definitely... Most people probably from the 80s are going to go, oh, yeah, that's definitely from Wonder Years. Or early 90s, I should like, or like. I wonder if Jason's still acting.
Yeah, it looks like he's still in the business. He's doing producer type stuff, writing and producing. He started out with Trevor Diamond D. I don't get no respect, Dad. I'll tell you. This opening sequence, there's a part where it's clear they've kind of like taken Dangerfield's face and like glued it on to like an actual photo, body in a photo. It just, it's, I remember laughing because it's just, I love that, his name above the title. Yeah. Bert Young. Yeah, like that. <laughs> it's so... Yep. <laughs> That's an actual photo of Keith when he was a baby. Tall and fat. Wasn't that the name of the store we worked that was across from us at the mall? Something we similar, there? though. <laughs> oh, that was big and tall. <laughs> that was a big and tall. <laughs> Not tall and fat. So Harold, so Harold Ramis was an executive producer as well. That's right. There's Stephen Campman and Peter. Chuck Russell, uh, not, in addition to being a producer, he uh, directed a bunch of movies, including um, Eraser with uh, Schwarzenegger. <laughs> Are you fat? <laughs> well, a little big. I gotta get bigger actors. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> 
But Mr. Billy. Chaz. Sorry, Johnny. That, that's like the ultimate like bully snob named Chaz. Like it's the pre it's the it's the precursor for Chaz Michael Michaels. <laughs> Will Farrell must have loved this movie as well. No cerveza. <laughs> there he is, Giorgio. It's like, dude, it's not that funny.
light beer. Wait, we got more. Now we get the taste of like what? <laughs> he was sixty five when he made this movie. Are you serious? Yeah. Wow. Sixty five. I think it's a good time to talk for a second about the soundtrack on this. It's yeah. Not bad. It's just really good. So Danny Elfman, who would later do the music for Batman, Batman. Beetlejuice, he also was the lead singer of Oingo Boingo. Uh, he did the music for Back to School, and I think he had a hand in pulling the soundtrack together. So, yeah, it's a great soundtrack. Yeah, he did. A, he did a lot of soundtracks. He's mm-hmm. some I like, some I don't. But this is definitely good. <laughs> Burt Young and his white socks. Well, man, this is you know everybody knows Burt Young from you know from the Rocky. Oh yeah, series in the eighty. But I mean, you know. I, I like this version of him because, yeah, you know, much different than playing Polly. Yeah. So, do you know how, how old Burt Young was when he did this? I don't. Dude was 46. <laughs> no way. I'm not kidding. He was born in 1940. Wow. <laughs> I would have thought 56, maybe, and not being generous. Yep. If you had told me 60, I'd have been like, okay, you know. I think Bert was part of that generation that looked a lot older for its its age. (laughs) There was our PG-13. Can you sell Okay, here's Robert Downey Jr. The uh, backup for the new power generation. Now, this is oh, I know we have done pretty in pink, and I don't want to spoil anything, but Molly Ringwald has said that she would have loved pretty if if instead of John Cryer for Ducky that, and I, and, and I've always said, I don't think that would work, but if he did it, he, if he played it this way, he could, he could be Ducky. Oh yeah. I mean, His, John Cryer is he Ducky. Played so Ducky no offense to John Cryer, but if, if Danny had played Ducky, it would have made a lot more sense for, for him and, and Molly Ringwald to get together. 
Yes, and that's. I don't but think you know, I, he and Molly started a movie in the eighties, um, the pickup artist, which you know, was a flop, huge. Which flop. yeah, I was about to say, this movie got a lot better. Uh, fresh squares. I think it only got like a forty something. I think for that, I was I was skimming through to look, you know, trying to compare what his movie ratings were. Lutz. Derek Lutz. Garrett Lutz. <laughs> now, the reason I've been reading is, um, John Cryer's autobiography. He talked about Pretty Pink Story. But he also talked about that he went to this theater camp and Robert Downey Jr. went maybe a couple years after he went. Yeah. And um, he, he, he did share that what he was known for was uh, get his dad would send him a care package. And his care package was of nice cannabis. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That was his care package. That was yeah. his, known his dad for. introduced him to quite a few things. Yeah. I think I think Robert Downey Jr. has been sober for and clean for a long time now. So yeah. it's a testament to his career yeah. resurgence, I should say. Not just- yeah. Because Lord knows, I mean, he went through a phase where I think a lot of people had written him off. Yep. He came back with a vengeance, man. He sure did. He sure did. Yeah. So it looks like this guy's directing more now. Who, Keith? Yes. Yeah. Ned Beatty. And also played this a lot different than he did uh, <laughs> in Deliverance or in Superman. Yeah. He's a squeal, piggy, squeal. <laughs> after you see that, it's kind of hard to see him do anything else after that. Well, yeah, I guess. I, no, I know. He's a great actor, though. He's, uh, yeah, he is. He's probably one of my favorite character actors. He's in a lot of movies, a lot of movies, a lot of television. <laughs> Burnt Young with the stogie. <laughs> Thank you. 
they talk about movies holding up themes and stuff. I think this definitely uh I think there's a lot of people who feel the same way still today. Yeah, a lot of people who spend their lives in professional educators and who don't know the first thing about the real world when it comes to There's Terry Farrell. <laughs> Not that upset. <laughs> Bert's a lefty. I didn't know that. Forgot that. Terry Farrell is very tall. If you yes, I can. Yeah, she, she was a model before she became an actress. This old Billy with his golden locks. My daddy's Howard Stark. Yeah. Well, my sensei is John Kreese. Some of those people are too old to be, like, unless they're grad students, I guess, but. And I, okay. <laughs> Just one of the guys referenced. Downey had a funny story about Dangerfield during the filming of this movie. He, uh, he said that during filming, you know, like the schedule, you know, Danny had some days off where he, they weren't filming him. And so he said he was at a local grocery store getting some stuff and uh, turned out Dangerfield was in the grocery store as well. And they wound up in the same line to check out. And uh, apparently Dangerfield said, uh, he's like, Hey kid, you, uh, you, sh what are you shooting again? And he's like, Oh, I'm, I'm off today and tomorrow. He's like, we don't, I, uh, I don't think I'm going to feel so good tomorrow. So maybe you could uh, shoot your scenes tomorrow. <laughs> so basically Dangerfield called in sick the next day because he basically didn't want to shoot. And so they had to get, so basically he's like, Dangerfield took my day off. <laughs> Sorry. So yeah, I don't think I'm going to feel so good tomorrow. Thank you. 
Good businessman. So, uh, what we're about to, I don't think I'll talk to her in a minute. Wow, this is what you wanted. This is I remember this going like, wow, this is, yeah. this is what college, what is, this is what you want college to be. Yeah, especially when I had my first dorm room, I was like, Pfft. yeah, this is definite fantasy. So this guy's still alive. Yeah. Paxton Whitehead. Yep. He's a Tony uh, nominated actor. <laughs> Tell that to the bank. Scarlett Johansson in the background. I'm you sure? <laughs> She's. Did you take the take the thing in game and go back in time? <laughs> this is probably this my favorite scene yeah. this whole Sam Kennison. Well his the stuff with him is awesome. Thank you. 
Was she right? Mr. Helper. <laughs> <laughs> I like the, the way, way you think. think. I like the way you think. I'm gonna be watching you. <laughs> Man, Ray and I would watch this, and we would. Do, I, would I would sit there and do an imitation to him. <laughs> <laughs> so, Kennison in this movie is, I think, a testament to the fact. One of the things that was so great about Dangerfield is that he recognized young comics and gave them a shot i don't know if you remember he had uh comedy specials on hbo yeah i remember that he would showcase up and coming uh comedians so like jim carrey um uh drew uh, excuse me dana carvey um sam kennison these guys and, and so many other comedians really owe dangerfield a huge amount of credit because he helped them get a get a their foot a leg up on the on the business. Sally Kellerman. She's still alive. She is. She's my dad's age, man. This is what. Wow. She she just had a birthday early this month. Yes. Yes. She um, is so funny talking about Star Trek. Uh, she actually was in the an episode of Star Trek, the original Star Trek. And um, yes. if you pull up <laughs> photos of her from the '60s, she, I mean, she's a beautiful lady, but in the in her prime in the '60s, just really stunningly beautiful. She's had a great career, though, tremendous career. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I like teachers. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right, maybe a very I'm, sultry voice. He does as a <laughs> so she was the original hot lips um she was in the movie version of mash 
She played Hot Lips Hulahan. I can see she could see her playing that. Ugh, I can't escape accounting talk, balance sheets, and there you go. Ugh. Should do a report on this movie for that no. for your class. No, <laughs> I can't, can't do it. No. Yeah, for those no. back for several episodes ago, yes, this is a, this is a podcast on accounting now. Look at his cool eye. I, is, that his, uh, is, that a, is that an iPod from 1986? <laughs> That's what it looked like, kids. Yeah. Coach, we saw him. There we go. We saw him for Wildcats. So, true story, uh, Dangerfield was uh, in real life an acrobatic high diver. Wow. Yep. No, that's pretty cool. I mean, I mean this, it says it's a story by him, so. Yeah. And, you know, one other thing, I, I meant to mention this earlier with Robert Downey Jr. So, he was, during the filming of this movie, he was also working on Saturday Night Live for that one season that he was on there. So he was flying back and forth from New York to Los Angeles twice a week to film while he was also doing SNL. That's pretty, that's, yeah. I mean, I hope Saturday Night Live releases, I would love to see all, like, I've seen little excerpts here and there, but yeah. I'd love to see it. All the episodes for that yep. season released. I don't care if, if it's bad or not. I saw to give see Anthony Michael Hall and Robert Downey Jr. I mean, see these guys as cast members. I want to see the Talking to me. (laughs) 
So, yeah, you had Joan Cusack on that, Jan Hooks. Yep. But you also had Kevin Nealon, Randy Quaid. Yeah. Victoria Jackson, A. Whitney Brown. It was the transition season before. It it was the transition season between kind of like the Eddie Murphy, Joe Piscopo days and then the Dana Carvey, you know, John Lovitz, Jan Hooks, Phil Hartman. It was kind of that transition season. I would, I still love As someone who watched a lot of those episodes because that was at a time, you know, I was in my teens, like 13, 14, when, you know, he was both uh, Downey and Anthony Michael Hall were on that season. So I watched it largely because of them. And uh, there were some really funny skits and then there were some really not so funny skits. Well, but, you know, that kind of, but more so than I know that's typical with SNL, but it, it was not a great season. I mean, it had some good things. I think that might have been the also, also the same season that Billy Crystal was on the cast. I may be confused. I may be I didn't mashing see, them together, but see that with him listed. I'm not saying it's not. Hey, we just saw this. We just heard this song last week. Mm-hmm. Ferris Bueller's Day Off. Yep. Also came out in 86. And by the way, this movie beat Ferris Bueller's Day Off. Yep. In money. But, you know, it's kind of wild that this movie don't get the, the kind of like Ronnie Dangerfield, don't get the respect. No, we're all smart. You're smart, smart, smart. The fair to show up. Who needs fairs when you got Ryan Dangerfield? Hey, there's Duke on the look at there on the I saw it. banner on the on the yeah. I think this was filmed up in uh, up in this Wisconsin. Was filmed at Arnold's. <laughs> Arnold's. <laughs> where's where's Pat Maria? <laughs> What are you doing here? I'll be right back. Don't mess with Iron Man. Or fight. <laughs> that didn't take long. Nope. I'm just waiting for somebody to get over the head, hit over the head with a bottle. 
that usually happens in these kinds of scenes. Usually, so Dangerfield was under contract with uh, Miller Beer Company, so like the beer that he drank had to be Miller Brands. I forgot he did those commercials. Yep. Oh. That's a great jukebox. He just messed it up. Nobody got hit over the head with the ball. <laughs> this is gay funny times give us jokes man i love I, I just i miss i miss him i miss the sense of humor like it's just nobody does comedy like he did great <laughs> Uh oh. Yeah, the ooh. Ready, Dangerfield, ladies, man. <laughs> it's like I'm watching this, and it's like so many things just co- it comes all back. It's like yeah. it, it's and I and I, I don't think I've I may have seen this once. Mm-hmm. This is one I've not seen hardly at all. But I've seen it so many times during this, there, I guess, 87, you know, probably, I guess, in the next year when it came in 87, 88. Yeah. I'm like, I mean, really, I mean, we've, I remember, like I said, I remember Ray and I were watching this. You know, Was that one of those Sam- nights that you uh, dug change out of the couch and ordered a pizza from PTA? Yeah, from PTA, baby. Pizza. <laughs> Transit Authority. Oh, yeah. Man, I love their pizza. Yeah, it was good, man. It and was. then you get the you get the on the box. You had a coupon. Oh yeah, like a, it was a slice of a pizza. You cut it. You cut it. You cut that out. So you give this guy come to your door like a dollar off. Like here's here's this cardboard pizza slice that cut out of the box, and there's like four dollars and sixty eight cent of change. <laughs> we bread maybe a dollar, maybe it'd be like one or two dollars, like two <laughs> one or two dollar bills with like the rest of it. And yeah, quarters, dimes, nickels, and the pennies. Oh. Resourceful young men. Oh man, we we could find some we could find some money. Man, I love PTA, but like for some reason the rest of my family didn't. So there were times like when my parents they would go out of town or. You know, I would have like they'd go out for for dinner and they'd be like, okay, you know, here's some money to order pizza. And I would like order PTA and Amy would be like, I don't want PTA. (laughs) I want Domino's. I'd be like, shut up. We're getting PTA. We're getting PTA. (laughs) Well, you know, what's wild is that, you know, Domino's took over, took over the the old PTA location uh, there on North Duke. Roxborough Road, whatever it was, I guess it was before. Yeah, Roxborough Road, North Duke Street, whatever. The, where right where there at the junction it used to be right there on the right hand side. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, Oh, 
Dude, there is a PTA r close to you. Really? It's in Wake Forest. PTA Pizza and Hoagie. They're still Pizza Transit Authority, Wake Forest. Wake Forest? Where? I need to look that up. What in the world? How did I not know this? How did I not know this? Wait a minute. Oh, I know why. Because where it is is a part of Wake Forest that I rarely, I, like I had, I'm looking at the strip mall where it is. Like I rarely, if ever, went to that part of town. Mostly because it's kind of run down. But uh, I'm just going to have to make a trip there. And there's one in a Creedmoor as well. Huh. So I'll tell you what, there, that one in Durham. Uh, I used to love getting a pizza. There was one weekend where it was right about this time when this movie came out. Um, my parents went out of town, and I think Amy went with them. I forget where they went, but I had to work that weekend or part of that weekend, so I stayed home. And I think it was like Friday night. Jeff and another friend of ours, Matt, came over to the house. And we basically grilled out, had burgers and dogs. But at one point we were like, we're still hungry. It was like late, like let's order pizza. So we got a pizza from PTA. I really did not know there was a I thought that was probably well I'm, I'm, years glad you, ago. I'm glad you looked that up. I'm looking at the photos of the pizza, like you know, Yelp photos. It's like, man, it looks good. It looks just like I remember it. Yeah, I'm gonna have to make a trip out there probably this weekend. Good old PTA. Yeah. Gosh, even the menus like you know, I never went to pick up stuff. I always, you know, ordered it. But yeah, the the pizza boxes it brings back memories. Yeah, man, I love their pizza. You got it. Yeah, you got to send me some. You got to send me some pictures. Yeah, it's good stuff. <laughs> Enough about this movie. Let's talk about PTA. <laughs> well, it was a kind of low on the action there, so this is yeah. we did we we talked about it at the right time. Yeah. Yeah, you know, it's like if, if I was if I was wealthy like he is in this movie, I, I'd want a Burt Young to be like my you know my right hand man who like. <laughs> this is the scene I always would come in. I'm like Kurt Vonnegut. Dad. <laughs> This actor, gosh, what is his name? He's been in a ton of stuff. Yeah, I've recognized him as well. Oh, yes. Severn, uh, Severn Darden. <laughs> of course. He was also in the movie Real Genius. Ah, okay. Which I know you don't like Real Genius, but I, I, I told you it. I loved Real Genius. You do? I loved it when I was a kid. I just I told you, you I watched saw it, it. That's what it was. You I saw it about a year ago, and it just yeah. didn't. It just it, it just wasn't as good to me as what it oh. is what I remember. Val Kilmer all, and it is just, so good in that movie. It's just that's the thing. It's like going, it's kind of like Iron Eagle. It's like going, I loved Iron Eagle when I was 14 or 15 years old. And it just didn't, it just didn't, it didn't get the, you know, the reminiscent. This didn't like this one here is really, I mean, so far I'm enjoying this a lot. Yeah. It's like, I mean, I mean, there's this, this is kind of the, I mean, like this part was kind of slow. This part of the movie is right here was, was slow then, but. 
it has a great finish as well. I mean, I mean, I mean, this isn't bad. I mean, this is, I mean, this is good. But I'm just saying, they're eating PTA pizza. Yeah, they eat pizza. I mean, this episode is brought to you by that. PTA Authority Pizza. We did that. We did that one right on cue about to about pizza, and then boom, there it is. Monkeys eating pizza. <laughs> no, I'm here for Fair Spieler. He couldn't be here today. He's sick. He's a very right. sweet letter. For Mr. Mellon. Take this down. Never, ever. Okie dokie. Needs to dial it down a little. I thought he said something. So it'd, be, it'd be some jug. He's like he's like his mother or something. <laughs> Take a chill. It's Tony Stark in disguise. And you know when they did those, was it um, which one was the end game? Which one? In uh, Infinity, Infinity War. Uh, they were, I think it's end game. Then he goes. That they, they show him at the beginning about going yeah. his like. See, like this is what I remember him being. No, that, so, that one was in, that one was. I think that was Infinity War. Yeah, I mean, I'm just saying this. Like, there's Endgame so much. Just, Endgame begins with him in space on the oh, Guardian right. spaceship. Yes, it does. But I'm just saying it's like, well, I think they could have they could have took some of these movies here, mm -hmm. and yeah, and the CGI. I mean, because there's so much. He's got so many movies out that he during this time frame when he's a teenager. Yeah. Or playing a teenager, I put it that way. I don't know how old he was here, but mm. all right, Johnny.
Final exam. So. <laughs> Chaz. I don't want to do it. Perfect lights. Helen Camp. Bunk. Oh, bust. Oh. Yikes. Hi. Man, we actually got vinyl. <laughs> this is a happening party. Ooh. Danny Elfman. I'm glad to see him make a cameo. <laughs> yep. <laughs> great song. It is a great song. And you got you got to appreciate Robert Downey Jr. There changing up his 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 hair yeah. his outfit like. Oh, Constantly throughout this whole. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and of course, he was in, he was. <laughs> that's. It still makes me laugh. There's so many funny lines in this movie. He was in Weird, Robert Downey Jr. was in Weird Science, which also featured. Boingo, boingo. It's a dead man's party. Best party of all time. <laughs> Don't call Oingo Boingo right the racket. Oh, this is great. I I don't know. I know it's good. Yep. <laughs> Oh, Philip. Oh. 
he looks like Tim Curry. <laughs> That's he, does. Like, he does. Yeah. It's like the Walmart version of Tim Curry. <laughs> oh. Between if Tim Curry and Steve, what's his name? The guy from Steve Buscemi. But had a had a baby <laughs> in a combined. Oh. Oh, that Rodney. Tell it to my nieces. I wear my sunglasses at night. That was a fake swig of beer if I ever saw one. Mm -hmm. You're the best around. No one's gonna go and take it up. <laughs> You're the best, Daniel. <laughs> Show me study books. <laughs> Watch the car. Son, are you saying you don't get any respect? That's what he's saying. It's a family thing. <laughs> so true story Robert Ludlum is one of Rodney Dangerfield's neighbors in real life so he was giving him a shout out with that Everybody is somebody sometimes. 
We're gonna we're gonna see we're gonna see some Dean Martin now and, and uh, Cannonball Run later on. That's right. That's year. right. Oh. What can I? I'm satisfied. <laughs> Gee whiz. <laughs> Thirty years. I don't say I was sixteen. <laughs> Forget about it. Forget about it. Got his brother. His brother-in-law. And Brock. Look at Dad, I tell you, he gets no respect. None. Okay. Is that called, called a classic? It looks like it. I see his son is wearing the Cliff Huxtable sweater. <laughs> Cliff Huxtable. So yeah, this is yeah, new coat that was came out in April of '85. So yeah, already had brought back the Coca Cola Classic. Now they were they were still doing new coat too at the same for a while, but yeah, so this is pretty cool. I think one of our very first episodes recorded, I think I had new Coke. That's right. You did. I think I and did you sent, you had some sent to my, uh, to the apartment. Yep. yep. And I, uh, I took a sip of one and gave the, gave them to my kids because they really wanted to try them. Um, so I, I, you know, cause I wasn't a fan of new Coke at all, but I did, I, I opened the first bottle. I poured myself about half the glass and then gave the rest of it to, uh, to Colin. How do they like it? You remember? Oh, he loved it. Yeah. I, yeah. I mean, I here's the thing. It's like going, it's not that I I love I like new Coke. I still like Coca Cola oh, original. Yeah. I mean, it was I, totally, I mean, it wasn't, yeah. it wasn't I mean, you know, like I wasn't I wasn't shattered, you know, right. my my whole life didn't See, I bought into the lie that they were replacing Coke and I, you know, I was definitely from a Coke family. You know, Coke was definitely my choice over Pepsi or any other ones. So when I tasted new Coke, my reaction, initial reaction was this tastes like Pepsi. And I did not like Pepsi. So, but I mean, I, I appreciate what they were doing now in hindsight. So this, uh, this space here, the oral exam, this was the same, um, 
place where they shot uh, Flashdance when Jennifer Beals' character is doing her audition. Oh. Sorry, Phil. I'm about to do it. For about the fifth time I mentioned this, we need to do a, do a mashup of... Every time he says his name, I think of that character in The Witch, Dr. Bombay. <laughs> was that Paul Lynn? <laughs> yeah. Or Paul Lynn was his name, but yeah. The one who talked like this all the time. <laughs> yep. Now, that would have been great if they got Paul Lynn to play this character. <laughs> I'm surprised they didn't put him on an Apple box, like put something for him to step up on because, I mean, she is like towering. Hey, man, tall girls they love too. So That's true. That is true. So what? First Allie, now her? You gotta be kidding me. <laughs> yeah. Thank mm -hmm. you. 
No, all joking aside, like I think Rodney could have done serious roles. Like if he had had the opportunity, I think he would have actually done well. He actually did do a serious role um, in uh, the movie Natural Born Killers, Oliver Stone's movie with Woody Harrelson. He plays, I think he plays Harrelson's dad in it. And he's like this abusive like alcoholic, whatever, but it's like a serious role, and he was really good in it. Hmm. No, remember, I don't. It's a very small role, but uh, there's another comic actor that I also would put in that category. It's John Candy. John Candy, I think, if he had lived longer, I think because you know he was in JFK with uh, Kevin Costner. He played a serious role in that, and. Uh, he was really good. <laughs> huh, me? <laughs> oh, I can't see. Mm. That's a two and a half for me, dude. <laughs> well, there's your, there's your you're the guy in the middle with the beard. Hey, she blew him a kiss. No. Hmm. For all the Cobra Kai fans out there, I love Johnny. Body bag, yeah. Oh, Billy. Them. Ah, boy. Daniel LaRusso. <laughs> yes, right. <laughs> LaRusso. It's like a crane kick to the face. <laughs> cramp, cramp. <laughs> it's his time of the month, you know. It's see this. I mean, I think this should have really shown people. I mean, this <laughs> it wasn't a huge role, but Billy Zavka, man, he he does Johnny so well in Cobra Kai. Yeah, 
and he's he was a great bully and even in this case here he wasn't really a bully he was more of a like you said a kind of egocentric you know kind of a snob but dude I, I, lo- I love his range and what he can do uh, yeah I don't think he gets enough credit I know I've he doesn't probably in the he last he doesn't and I and I hope he gets. I, I know I said it's probably the last time we talked about him, but I hope he gets other opportunities to do other than Cobra Kai. I mean, Cobra Kai is great, and it's. I hope it goes on another three seasons, or you know. But uh, but I hope he gets to do because of that. I hope he gets to do some other stuff that he wants to do. I, in a, in the I, I was thinking after this last season, I was thinking the same thing. And here we go. Here's the... he's like two feet off the ground in that shot <laughs> How can we give the appearance to Hazel? Oh, I wonder if they had him jumping on a trampoline. Does the air just go, ah? <laughs> Hey, was this movie produced by Columbia Pictures? Uh, Orion. There's a lot of there's a lot of coke placement in this movie. That's what I was <laughs> So this movie came what just one of the guys came out in '86, right? We did. I mean, that's the 35th yeah. anniversary, right? Yeah. So yeah, we this really. I'm just talking about William Zalka Bow. He really did a. He was busy. Yep. Because he had to come back and film even the the very beginning of Karate Kid too. No, just one of the guys was 85. Oh, okay. All right. So, oh, we that's right. We included that because of the whims that yeah. Yeah. Stay home. There's the shot. Yep. Estelle Uh, was his manager. She died during the filming of this movie. She really um, helped him have the career that he had. So this movie went by really fast. Really, it seems like it just flew by. Maybe well, you know, I, I was listening. I was, 
I was listening to um, an interview with a guy who wrote um, the the Karate Kid, which is I forgot how you say it. Um, Robert Mark Kamen. Thank you. Um, I know it's going to murder. I was going to say one one word before the other or whatever. But he was talking about how they like like movie theaters, you know, didn't want movies going over two hours. Yeah. Messed up their – about how they could sell concession. They, you can have more sh- more showings in a day, in which they could sell more popcorn, more drink, and that's how they made their money, yeah. all this kind of stuff. And so I think, you know, back in that time frame even especially, it was more important. I think they – they really did try to keep movies under two hours and make them. I mean, in comedies, especially, they especially you know, comedies, yeah, especially comedies. I mean, they never had a comedy go. You know, and also movies during this time period used a lot of songs like this song, like songs from the 60s, like Respect, Stand By Me, Lean On Me, like all these songs kind of had a revival in the 80s Mm -hmm. movie soundtracks. Which I guess we're doing this, they're doing the same thing now by using 80s, you know, 70s, 80s. Yep. It all comes full circle. It does. So, you know, uh, Michael Bolton had a song in the soundtrack. And, uh, of course, Oingo Boingo, we mentioned. What was his, what was his song? Uh, song, it was Everybody's Crazy. Um, and I forget where it's played in the movie. Um, I don't remember where it plays. I gotta take this and plug it in. Because I do want to talk about before we finish up about uh, Ronnie Dangerfield and his. I remember an article I read about him um, and it includes one of our first podcasts that we at least mm-hmm. it and you, you remember who do you remember what our first what our first podcast released who who that featured yeah it was blood sport with jean claude yeah, so there's a John Claude it's a Van Damme story with Ronnie Dangerfield. Is that right? Yep. No, that I didn't know. Well, I'm going to say you did know, you just forgot <laughs> because because I, I'm sure we talked about it. But sorry. If you did, I don't remember. Yeah, here we go. There we go. Come on, me. Can you still see me? Uh, no. Kevin, can you still hear? Okay, there we go. Yeah, I can hear you, and I can okay. see you. Here's bad. Okay. All right. Good. Okay. Oh, I lost you on the audio. It was. 
Okay, can you hear me now? Yeah, I can hear you now. Okay, all right. There's there was there was an article with John Claude Van Damme. I don't remember. It's like you know, if it was Entertainment Weekly, I think it was some like a ma- it was like a magazine like Vanity Fair. It was it was it. I mean, it wasn't it wasn't a cheap. Like a, I mean, it wasn't I mean? No, I'm not. It wasn't like a Maximum or a Playboy or something that you know could yeah. be you know whatever I'm talking about. And you know, it was a it was a it was an article. You know, I don't know. And but but John Claude talks about that he had a, that he had a he had an affair with with Ronnie Dangerfield's wife, his last wife. Um, um, yeah, her name is Joan. Joan, and talks about how Rodney found out about it and got really, I mean, obviously got really upset. And I mean, which kind of, you know, maybe think a little bit about that when in the movie, when um, his, his wife, you know, whatever um, in the, like in this, and I don't know, it was so weird. It's like, but I've not found anything. I remember, I remember like one time, like since then, I remember I, I've thought about that and I looked it up and I couldn't find it. You know, of course, you know, I'm sure no one wants to put that on Wikipedia or whatever, but that article, I mean, like it's, it's in print somewhere. I just don't remember yeah. who wrote it. I don't remember. And, uh, and I'm sure, you know, his wife and probably Rodney probably tried to keep that on the down low and didn't want to yeah. you know, publicize that, but. Well, back in the uh, day, back in the day um, when she was in her prime, I mean, she was, Oh, she's, she's yeah. gorgeous. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, he talked, I mean, like, like he talked about it in, I mean, he didn't go into like great detail. I don't, you know, or anything, not trying to like, you know, but he gave enough detail to kind of, you know, like there's, you know, a backstory of, of, you know, what was going on. And I, and I think that it was, you know, and I think in that, I think in that same article, he talked about, like, you know, like after that, getting back, I mean, and, and I think he may have been on, he may have been taking some drugs or doing something at that time. It, yeah. it, was, it was, it was kind of in his down period of his life too. It's not, and I don't think he was saying it to be like bragging that he was, that he had, you know, had, you know, like had messed around with Ronnie Dangerfield's life. It just, I think it was, you know, but he was just being honest about what had happened. And um, so it's. Yeah. And I think it was, you know, part of his, and I, and I think that was part of his problem too. I think he had a, I think he mentioned in that article about having maybe a, you know, like a, almost like a sex addiction problem to a certain degree, you know, that he, he just liked women. I mean, and just talked about, but I think for, but to, but to his credit, I think he, I think he remarried, like, like he divorced one wife and I think he got back with her. Uh, yeah, he remarried was, her. yeah, that, he was, he was married. Three times? Three times a maybe. No, sorry. That's not what we're talking about. Yeah, he uh, yeah, he had three wives. Well, two wives. I'm sorry. His first wife, he was married to her for 10 years. They divorced. They remarried two years later, but the marriage only lasted seven more years. And then he was single until he married Joan in 1993. Um, there's, uh, so I mentioned this in, in, on Instagram. So Rodney was one of the first celebrities, uh, to have a website. So back in 95, I believe it was 95, uh, Rodney had his, his website, Rodney.com. And it is still up. It is still being maintained. Uh, but he had an email link on his website where um, you could email him. And apparently he responded. Anybody who emailed him, he would respond. Oh, wow. So, uh, but the website that currently is actually a, a really impressive tribute. You should check out the site sometime. But there's a kind of a list of like his kind of highlights of his life. So, um, it's funny because it lists the number of commercials he did for like Miller Lite. He did 20, by the way. Um, his favorite city, Las Vegas. His favorite activity, smoking weed. Uh, his favorite food, Chinese. Uh, he actually owned a nightclub, which was called Dangerfields. 
and uh, he passed away in 2004 at the age of 82. So, um, you know, I said this during the film that when Dangerfield was alive, I think a lot of people, critics, and, and even people from our generation just thought of him as, you know, oh, he's a comedian. He has a bunch of one-liners, you know, he, I don't get no respect, you know, that whole thing. But um, watching this movie again, it's, I mean, he really was good at what he did. And, yeah. uh, you know, it, it's like, I don't, I don't think this movie would have been nearly successful with any other comedian. I think it is just, it was, built for him and, and it just played to his strengths and um it just makes me watching it again just reminds me of how how much he made me laugh whether it was this movie or easy money or caddyshack or the number of times that he was on the tonight show with johnny carson and then later on with jay leno um just a funny funny guy so, yeah. so glad we got a chance to watch this Me too. This was yeah. yeah this, was, this was fun to re like I mean like to revisit and it was just and like not seeing it in a long time. I mean I I've seen it. I'm sure once or even probably once the last ten years for sure. But yeah, but but yeah, it's it's been a while and it just came right. It's like a it's like an old glove that fits, but it fits nice and it fits perfect. It just yeah, it's uh, I, and it's uh, not Ronnie Dangerfield. That's kind of him. He he just yeah there's i highly recommend you know check out his website uh, rodney.com there's it's just a great collection of some of his comedy some of his jokes movies his history just uh, you know there's articles in there that were written um, about him in, in major publications um i just got there's some really great jokes here like this one the first one it says uh I tell you, when I was a kid, I had it rough. Once on my birthday, my old man gave me a bat. The first day I played with it, it flew away. <laughs> and the thing is, it's like nobody can, I mean, I can sit here and read it. It's funny, but it's it's even funnier when he says it. It's like there's something that he just could. It's delivery. He, could, he yeah. could deliver a joke that just, I mean, I've seen this movie. I'm not kidding. I've probably seen it a dozen times. And there were okay. times tonight where it still makes me laugh. I mean, it's just, and, and it's just, he's just so good at what he does. It just, even though I know it's coming, yep. it's just his delivery just makes it, um, you know, and, and I, I, there are a lot of funny people today. Um, there are a lot of funny people today who owe a huge debt to Rodney because he helped them get their start. But there's just, it, it's like, they broke the mold after after he you know was born it's like there's not there has not been another Rodney Dangerfield and I don't think there ever will be another one I mean just he just was a unique talented funny guy that uh you know from what I've read about him and what I've heard um I mean he certainly had his flaws as do as do a lot of people in that business uh but just the fact that he was so nurturing and encouraging of young comics and gave them opportunities like he gave them because i think part of that was born out of the fact that his career starting out like he had a rough go of it i mean he there were times where he really thought about throwing in the towel and just quitting and just getting a real job and you know and, and just giving up on showbiz uh but he stuck to it and i think there was something in him when he finally hit it big he's like I'm going to do, I'm going to do for others what nobody did for me. Like, I'm going to try to help people who are funny. I'm going to try to give them a chance to get seen, to get visible. Um, and so like people like Jim Carrey and Dana Carvey and a bunch of others, I mean, they, they are on record as saying that I would not have a career if it wasn't for Rodney Dangerfield. So to me, that's like, you don't yeah. get many celebrities who do that kind of thing where, you know, they use their fame, they use what they've gained to help others. I mean, that that's that's a huge thing. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. So, anyway.
Yeah, the website even has all of his commercials on there. Um, and, and there's uh, clips from Tonight Show, Late Night with Conan O'Brien. Yeah. And apparently at his 80th birthday, he came to the Tonight Show and Jay presented, this is when Jay Leno was hosting, of course, uh, Jay presented him with a birthday cake. Jim Carrey was there to uh, to be a part of it. But I think that was also the same show where he did stand up and he was not quite himself. And Jay noticed something was off. And so as soon as the, they went to commercial, uh, Jay had them call the paramedics to the studio. And it turned out that, yeah, he had had a heart attack. Wow. He had a heart attack while he was doing stand-up and somehow did not collapse, managed to do it. But Jay could, I mean, he and Jay were close. And so Jay could tell something was not right. Um, but it wasn't long after that, I think, um, you know, his health just kind of spiraled. But uh, there are a lot of people who, uh, like Adam Sandler, Bill Murray, Bob Saget, Chris Rock, George Lopez, Harold Ramis, of course, who was involved with the movie. Um, lots of them. Jerry Seinfeld. Uh, yeah. So he would be, uh, Ryan Dangerfield would be 100 this year if he was still alive. Yeah. Think about that. I know. I mean, it's like, I mean, I know where, I mean, that just shows you. Yeah, that's. But he was 82 when he passed away. It's not like, you know, he didn't. Uh, but it's hard to believe that it's been. Yeah. been 17 years. I mean, that's, no. I mean, that's what's. The, uh, so I made it a point. Um, so he, there is an Instagram. He has, there is an official Rodney Dangerfield Instagram account. I'm assuming Joan, his wife, manages it, but the posts that I've put on Instagram promoting this episode, I made it a point to tag his account because, um, you know, I, I mean, a lot of people know Rodney Dangerfield. It's not like we're really, you know, it's not like we're resurrecting his memory or anything through this, but, you know, just, uh, I hope this, uh, this episode, you know, is just a reflection of the fact that you know we were really fortunate and we talk about the, all the great movies in 86, but, you know, being two kids that grew up in the eighties, um, I think we were really fortunate that we lived at a time where there were comedians like Rodney Dangerfield, who just were so funny and, and did movies that I think still hold up today. I mean, I, you know, Back to school may not be on par when you think comedy classic like, you know, Ghostbusters or, you know, any of the vacation movies. But um, I mean, it it's a really, to, in my mind, especially watching it again tonight, it, it's a great time capsule, like a comedy time capsule, if you will, um, of that period. I think it just it really, I think in a lot of ways, captures a lot of the elements of a of a true 80s comic or comedy so yeah i mean like this movie outperformed ferris bueller's day off but you know but ferris bears ferris bueller's day off is is got the prestige and the the staying power that's yeah. and, and revered more than than this movie is at the same time you're right but but you know but some of that's got to do with not just because it's you know i think it probably is a better movie for sure but uh then then about to school but i think it but I, about but i think with about to school you, you know you have this like we talked about earlier like a multi-generational cast there you know and i and i think that you know that works i mean it worked then it works it still works now i just don't you know it's it, like i said i think it's it, it's better it's it's better than what people give it, probably give it credit for. And I don't think people are dogging on it or anything. I don't think there's right. anybody out there saying, oh, that movie sucks. It's horrible or anything like that. It's just that it just, just kind of gets forgotten. Yeah. That's the, yeah. And it's, and it's, and it's not, and it's not a movie that's, it's not a movie 
that should be forgotten. It's that I'm not saying it, it should be, you know, like it's the, you know, in the top, in the top 20 eighties movies of all time, but it's, you know, but, but when it comes to comedy, it's, it probably is in the top 25 comedy movies of the eighties. I mean, it's, oh, yeah. it's, I mean, it's up there. I mean, it's there. I'm not saying it's up there in the top 10, but it's there. So it's kind of like, it, it deserves a little bit more, you know, a little bit more praise and hopefully we're giving it it's due tonight. So. Yeah. 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 So um, I guess one other thing to mention before we wrap up. So of course, you know, we mentioned Ned Beatty is in this film and Ned passed away not too long ago. Uh, I think his involvement in this film is just another example of it really had, this film had a really solid cast. It wasn't just comic actors, uh, although I would consider Ned Beatty a comic actor, but he was also could be a very serious actor. You know, we joked about deliverance, uh, but one thing is clear. A lot of the actors in this movie have tremendous range. Billy Zabka, Robert Downey Jr., um, you know, Ned Beatty and Sally Kellerman and on and on. I mean, this is, there's a lot of reasons to like this film. Um, obviously Rodney and his comedy is the big seller here, but I think what supports it, what makes it such a great film is that there are some terrific actors and Ned Beatty is one of them. And, um, you know, when, when I, when we learned of his passing, you know, it's, it's one of those things that Beatty uh, is an actor or was an actor who always brought his A game, no matter what the size of his role was. And his role is, you know, relatively small in this movie. I mean, he's in a few scenes, right? Uh, but he he always brought credibility. Like if Ned was in a movie, and and there were some movies he did, especially towards the end of his his career. When I say the end, probably the the last quarter of his career. There's some movies that were, you know, low budget, you know, not the greatest. But he he, it's like he went into it like this. This may be a low budget film, but I'm bringing you big budget talent. I'm like I'm bringing big budget quality here. Uh, you know, of course, my first real memory of him, as I'm sure is probably yours, is playing Otis in Superman. Yeah. Um, and and the thing I've, you know, and I watched that the, those movies because he's in the first two, and I watched those movies uh, last year, um, at the end of last year, with my youngest son, uh, because he had kind of gotten onto a Superman kick and he wanted to watch those movies, so we sat down and watched them together, and it's. You know, as as Otis, he was the bumbling, you know, right hand man to Lex Luthor. And, you know, I remember at the time seeing that movie when it first came out, just thinking, you know, he's he's the comedy in the in the film or whatever. But watching it again with my son, I was just really impressed with how he really plays it like he doesn't overplay it. He doesn't ham it up. He's just like he delivers the goods. And, and there's a there's several scenes in the movie where he's not saying or doing anything. He's kind of in the background. Um, I think about the scene where Superman confronts Lex Luthor directly for the first time, you know, they've, and Ned Beatty is just so funny. And like he doesn't have a whole lot to do in those scenes, but he just, you know, so it was great to see him in this movie. Um, it was a shame that we lost, uh, lost him recently. He was just a great actor. Um, so yeah. And he was. Yeah. So you ready to wrap this up? Is there anything else we want to talk about? No, I think the okay. Billy Zapka trilogy is over. That's right. The, that's that's right. The yeah, Billy folks. Zapka trilogy is complete. Just one of the guys, Karate Kid Part Two. You know, he was in it just briefly, and now um, back to school. Back to school. Yeah. it's like watching that's Billy. It. You know, we talked about this in the movie. Watching him as an adult, and and knowing like what he went on to do with Cobra Kai. Uh, I'm with you. I think he he needs to do other things because he definitely, I believe, has the range to do some really great dramatic work. He's also really good at comedy. I mean, I think he he definitely balances that, especially in Cobra Kai. There are so many moments where he is hilarious and then so many moments where you really feel for his character because he's he's really bringing a lot of depth to it. So, um, so yeah, we're completing the 
Zabka trilogy until the Zabka I, trilogy. This until, is the unofficial, the unofficial Zabka trilogy. That's right. Until until we finally get around to the first Karate Kid, and then it'll first be Karate like, Kid, and then when, and, and we want the European test. European vacation. That's right. Oh, that's right. I forgot a European vacation. But the brother yeah. bring that one into the mix is like I guess that may, that'll make it a quadrilogy. A quadrilogy. <laughs> or a, or a I don't even know. I have to look it up. So, but yeah, this this was great. I'm glad we got a chance to watch this. This is a great movie. In addition to being known as a comedy giant, Rodney Dangerfield also had a reputation for giving young comics a helping hand with their careers. Jim Carrey, Sam Kinison, Dana Carvey, and many other comics owe a debt of gratitude for Rodney taking them under his wing and giving them a shot. Rodney Dangerfield was also ahead of his time, too. In 1995, he was one of the first celebrities to have his very own website, Rodney.com which is still going strong today. The comedy legend of Rodney Dangerfield lives on. We hope you enjoyed this 35th movie commentary celebration of Back to School. If you like the podcast, consider supporting the Midnight Movie Snack Podcast and help us continue to make episodes about the movies we all love to watch and talk about. Find out how you can support us in this episode's show notes. Until next time, thanks for listening.